What up y'all and welcome to the Wizards Forge. This video is going to cover how to create a hairstyle mod in the Creator Kid. This hairstyle will be available in both the Character Creator and Madam Snelling's shop in Hogsmeade. With that being said, let's get started. We'll start off this video by creating an empty mod. Then we're going to open the Creator Kid's built-in Character Creator and then create a hairstyle preset. Then we're going to select the skeletal mesh we want to use for our hairstyle and then create the data asset so we can add it to the avatar. Then we'll finish off this video by creating the UI icon the player is going to see when they select the hairstyle in game. Then we'll upload our mod to CurseForge. Create a new hairstyle mod. First we're going to create an empty mod. So I'm going to select this create mod button, select a new empty mod, and then give our mod plugin a name. I'm going to call this headmaster underscore black underscore hairstyle. Once that looks good, I'm going to select the create mod button. Once that mod's created, I'm going to make sure show plugin content is enabled. To do this, I'm going to select the view option button down at the bottom and then make sure show plugin content is enabled. Next up, I'm going to open the character creator. To do this, I'm going to select the folder next to the mod plugin name then scroll up until I find customizable character content. Then when that loads, I'm going to double click this character creator. Then once the character creator loads, I'm going to select the play button to load into the character creator. Then I'm going to click into the viewport and then press the F11 key to make it easier to see. I want this new hairstyle to be for the avatar, so I'm going to go up to editor mode, select this, and then select avatar preset. Now my character is still stuck in troll mode from a previous mod, so if you run into this as well, you can select the type button and then scroll up until you find player and then select the player option. Now the default lighting for the avatar preset can be a little hard to see, so I'm going to select the scene option, then select cinematic, and then I'm going to select interior lighting again. Next, we're going to set what gender we want our hairstyle mod to be for. An important thing to note, the character creator handles both male and female characters separately. So if you make a hairstyle for the male character, you're going to have to make another one for the female character as well. This hairstyle is going to be for the male avatar, but if you want to make one for the female avatar, select this gender option and then select female. To create a new hairstyle option, I'm going to scroll down until I find the hairstyle section, and then I'm going to press the plus button to create a new hairstyle preset. I'm going to give our hairstyle preset a name. I'm going to call it WFM underscore hairstyle underscore zero one. Then once everything looks good, I'm going to press the OK button to create a new preset. Now if we go back to our mod folder, we'll see that the creator kit has created a bunch of assets for us. The first thing we're going to check is the new data asset that the creator kit made. So we're going to select data, then avatar presets, hairstyle, and then select this data asset. With this selected, the easiest way I found to create a new character piece is going to be to copy one that's already in game. So I'm going to find the character piece option, then select this eyeglass to navigate to it in the content browser. Then I'm going to click it, right click, and then press copy reference. Then I'm going to navigate back to my mod folder, and then I'm going to press control V to paste this data asset. Then if we open up that data asset, we'll see that it's of type a character piece. So that means it has all the details of a character piece data asset. Since we duplicated this from an existing one, everything's already filled out for us, but we'll go through and see the most important parts. The first one is going to be character classifications. This is going to be what type of character this character piece is for. So right now it's selected to human, but if we select this, we have different options we can choose from. Next up, we have character piece type. This is going to determine where in the character creator this asset is going to be. So right now we have it set to hair, but we have different options we can choose from. Next up, we're going to have gender. This is going to be what gender the character piece is for. Note the character creator handles male and female presets separately. So if you make one for the male character, you're going to have to make another one for the female character. Next up, we have default mesh. This is going to be what hairstyle this character piece uses by default. Next up, we're going to have mesh overrides. This is going to let us set various conditions that if they're true, it's going to replace the default mesh with the one in the mesh override. This is used if you want to make hat friendly hairstyles. You'd select the various tags. So this one's CC rules hood up. So whenever the avatar's hood is up, it's going to use this hairstyle instead. Next up, I'm going to select what hair I want to use for my mod. So I'm going to use this headmaster black hairstyle located at content, rigged objects, characters, human, hair, hair underscore M, and then pro05. So I'm going to select this in the content browser, right click, then select copy reference. And I'm going to navigate back to my mod folder, click in the content browser, and then press control V to paste the hairstyle. And instead, if you'd like to use your own hairstyle from outside of the creator kit, you'll click in your mod folder, right click, and then press this import asset button. 
then you're going to want to make sure you import your hair as a skeletal mesh. You're going to want to make sure this skeletal mesh option is enabled. Once everything looks good, you'll press the import button. Now this part isn't necessary, but just to make things easier, I'm going to rename the data asset to something that fits our mod a little better. So I'm going to click it, right click it, select rename, and I'm going to give it a new name. So I'm going to call it DA underscore headmaster black hairstyle underscore M. Then I'm going to double click the character piece data asset to open it. The first thing I'm going to do is replace this default mesh with the hairstyle that I want to use for our mod. So I'm going to select it in the content browser, then go back to the data asset, and then select this arrow button to add our hairstyle. If you've made some hat friendly hairstyle options, you'll do the same thing and replace all of these mesh override skeletal meshes with the one you want to use for your mod. Since I don't have any hat friendly options, I'm going to delete all of these mesh overrides so it always uses the default mesh. So I'm going to find the mesh overrides, find the little garbage can icon, and then remove all elements and then press the save button to save your new data asset. Now that our headmaster black hairstyle character piece is created, we're going to add it to the avatar preset definition data asset to make it a selectable option for our avatar. So we'll navigate to the content browser and then double click our data asset. Then we're going to replace this character piece data asset with the one we just created. So I'm going to select it in the content browser and select this arrow button to add it to this data asset. Then once that looks good, make sure to press the save button. Then we're going to load back into the character creator and I'm going to press the F11 key to make things easier to see. And we'll select the gender that we made the hairstyle for and then scroll down to the hairstyle option. Then we'll select the hairstyle drop down and then select our newly created hairstyle. So I have the WFM underscore hairstyle underscore zero one. Now we can see how that hairstyle option looks on our avatar. We'll finish this mod off by selecting the UI icon that the player will see in game when they want to select this hairstyle. Do this by using the Creator Kit's built-in icon editor, but there's going to be a couple settings I want to change beforehand. First off, I'm going to select the Scene option up at the top, and then select Gear Icons. Now when we create our icon, it'll have a transparent background similar to the other icons in-game. Next up, I'm going to change the head style of the avatar to a mannequin. So I'm going to go to the Head Style option, and then select Head. Then I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom, and then it'll say Mannequin underscore M. I'm going to select that. Then we'll navigate back to the hairstyle section, and then next to that red debug icon, we're going to select this enter icon edit button. Then we're just going to make sure the correct gender is selected and the correct hairstyle, Then once everything looks good, we'll press the save button. Then if we navigate back to our mod folder, we can select content, UI, icons, character creator, then we'll see our new UI icon. Now all that's left is to create a data table for this UI icon and then add that data table to the mod mutator. To create our data table, first I'm going to right click into the content browser. Then I'm going to go up to miscellaneous, then I'm going to select this first data table option. Then I'm going to select this none drop down and I'm going to type in icon. Then I'm going to find the icon info data table and then select that and then press OK. And then I'm going to give our data table a name. I'm going to call it DT underscore WFM underscore hairstyle underscore zero one. Then we're going to double click our data table to open it and we're going to add a new row. So I'm going to press this add button up at the top. Then for row name, I'm going to have it exactly as I put it in the character creator. So I'm going to have WFM underscore hairstyle underscore zero one. And then for the icon, I'm going to select in the content browser and then select this arrow key to add it to the data table. Once that looks good, we can save and then close out of our data table. Now all that's left to do is add that data table to this mod mutator. So navigate back to the top of your mods folder, then select this BP underscore mod mutator. Next up, we're going to navigate to the data table extensions option and then press the plus button to add another data table option. This additional data option is going to be the data table we're going to add to the data table that already exists in game. So we'll be able to see our modded data table. So I'm going to select our modded data table from our content browser and select the arrow key to add it to the mod mutator. This table to add to is going to be the icon data table that's already in game. So we'll select the none drop down. We're going to type in UI underscore DT underscore icons and then select this data table. Then we can compile and save our blueprint. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I upload this mod is going to be remove this hair cap. So to do that, we'll go back to the character creator, navigate back to the hairstyle option, and then we're going to select the gear option next to head. Then I'm going to select both these hair cap options and turn them blank. So I'm going to select this drop down and then select blank MSK. And same thing, I'm going to select this and do blank normal. Then we can close out of this and then make sure we press the save button on our hairstyle option.
To verify everything's working correctly, I load it into the root level, located at content, levels, root level. I'm going to press F11 to make things easier to see, and I'm going to navigate to the character creator. Then I'm going to select a male preset and then go to the hairstyle options. Then I'll scroll to the bottom and I'll see our hairstyle has the correct UI icon and then it looks good in game. Then we're going to finish off this video by uploading our mod. So we're going to select this upload mod button, then make sure the correct mod is selected and then give our mod a name. This is going to be how it appears in the mod menu in game. So I'm going to have headmaster black male avatar hairstyle. Then we're going to select an image. We're going to, want to make sure it's a one by one image that's at least 400 pixels and under five megabytes. So a square image under five megabytes. For the category, I'm going to select character and then set the mod summary and mod description. Important thing to note, your mod description needs to be longer than your mod summary or your mod won't upload. Then once everything looks good, we're going to press the upload button. Thanks for watching, that's me for this video. If you found it helpful, like and subscribe, and let me know what kinds of videos and tutorials you'd like to see next. Wizards Forge Mods, out.